Hello, everyone. <clears throat> you all are at a really, really good stage now to tackle an example like this. It has some springs involved and some ramps involving and also friction, some areas with friction, without friction. In this video, I am going to talk to you about how to get started on this problem. And I would love to see you all try this problem, bring your work to tomorrow's Wednesday's class. And we can talk about the solutions. We can compare our answers and check what's going in this problem. In any case, when we have these springs, potential energies, gravitational potential energies involving in problems, I shared some tips with you all how to tackle, how to start these problems. So right here, working with these examples require identifying what are the important events. I could say whenever the spring is compressed, that could be one event when it says the spring is compressed by. At one point, spring is compressed right here. That could be our one of the events. And when you release that and the object or the mass is moving with the velocity, V could be V1, anything. And when it reaches down here, bottom of the ramp, that could be our another event, bottom of the ramp. And also when this mass or the object is going, going maximum height, this one, max location, we could have one, two, three, four events in this problem. And also going further, figuring out the gravitational potential energy zero level. This level right here, zero, gravitational potential energy zero, the ground level. Whenever the maximum height is going up this much, or you could say height h, this is related to the gravitational potential energy m times g times h from the zero level. So this could help us moving forward. And when the spring is stretched or compressed by a distance x, spring potential energy one half k x squared is involving right here in the compressed situation. Okay. And <clears throat> so we talk about right here from the natural length, uncompressed length, it is compressed by a distance x that is equal to 15 centimeters. And moving forward, A to B, there's no any friction. You could use this guy, conservation of energy. This is valid for A to B. And also on the ramp, there's no any friction. Between B and C, this region, it has friction. This is where you are going to use the extended version of the work energy theory. Okay, so let's talk about in detail. Part A is asking for how fast was the block traveling? So involving events. Whenever the block is attached to the spring, compressed and holding. You compress it, holding there, this means the speed V naught of this object is equal to a zero. It's not moving, you compress holding it. And the spring is compressed. There's a spring potential energy stored, one half K, let's say X naught square. X naught is equal to this much, the spring constant is given. Next event, when you release it, the spring is already came back to its natural length. So there's no any spring potential energy stored there. But now the block is going to start moving forward. Let's say V1 is the speed. So there's no any friction. We can talk about 
mechanical energy of the event zero is equal to mechanical energy of the event one. We have total kinetic energy, potential energy gravitational, potential energy spring. These are for the event zero. Same case, kinetic energy for the event one, spring potential energy, gravitational potential energy for the event one. The block, no, the spring is moving right here for the spring zero, kinetic energy. There's no any kinetic energy, so it goes to a zero. Spring potential energy, yes, it has one half k x naught squared. Gravitational potential energy, the block and the spring is at the same level and it is going to be at the same level. So there's no any gravitational potential energy change. Change the color. There's no any gravitational potential energy change from event one to event zero to event one. Only situation we have now for the event zero, all the energy stored is in the spring. That's the spring potential energy. And when the spring is released, there's no any spring potential energy stored for the event one. This guy goes to a zero. Only situation we have energy stored in terms of the kinetic energy that's equal to one half mv1 squared. One half is going to cancel out. You have a K, bring this M down below right here. X naught squared. Take the square root of this one. You will get V1 equals what? That is where the block is going to travel when it is left the spring right here. We are looking for V1 right here. Spring constant K is given. This is the spring constant K. This guy is the kinetic energy, capital K V right. Mass of the object is given and X naught is equal to 15 centimeters. So there we go, part A. Similar aligning with what we discussed in the classroom. Going back to part B, this is where it has friction from B to until you come to the location C. This is where you have to talk about the extended version, delta E mechanical equals delta K, change in kinetic energy, change in potential energy equals work done by the non-conservative force, work done by the friction. Now, let's talk about this guy. Right here, the object is moving with a speed V1. This is event V1. So there's a kinetic energy for the event one equal to one half M V1 squared. Spring has already done its job. The block is traveling at the same level. So there's no any gravitational potential energy difference. Right here, let's assume it has a speed V2. Two. This is related to a kinetic energy at the event two, one half m v two squared. Okay, let's talk about these guys. Change in kinetic energy, change in potential energy, change in kinetic energy. There we go, we have kinetic energy of the event two minus kinetic energy of the event one plus change in spring potential energy, plus change in gravitational potential energy equals to work done by the friction force. Now, as you can see, the object is moving at the same level. There's no change in gravitational potential energy. It is a zero. There's no any spring involving B to C. From B to C, there's no any spring. Spring already done its job. This guy goes to a zero. All what we have is this guy.
kinetic energy at the event two, one half mv2 squared minus kinetic energy of the event one, one half mv1 squared equals work done by the friction. You are trying to find when it is approaching the bottom of the ramp, V2 equals what? That's what we are trying to find. The only thing you need right here, you are trying to find this guy, you already found how much is the V1, work done by the friction, you have work done by the friction, it is equal to force of friction, distance it traveled, angle cosine between the friction force and the displacement. Right here, if I consider a situation, the object is traveling this way, but the friction force is opposite. That is where I could say this angle is 180. Distance it traveled 3.2 meters. Friction force equal to mu k times force normal. This force normal right here is equal to m times g gravitational acceleration. So really easy, just a couple of substitutions you have to do in order to find V2 equals what? Hopefully you will be able to find numbers. We can check them inside the classroom, okay? So going to this guy, part C. Now the object is already right here. It had that number you found, V2 the kinetic energy related to that. That energy is stored in that object. What happens with that energy? The object is going to travel to the maximum, maximum height along the ramp means the speed right here becomes zero. No friction involving. So I could say mechanical energy of the event two is equal to total mechanical energy of the event Three, kinetic energy plus potential energy, gravitational potential of the spring. This is for the event number two is equal to kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy of the event three. Kinetic energy. Yes, we have some kinetic energy on the mass that is equal to one half m v2 squared related to this guy. Gravitational potential energy zero level, ground level. That's where it is going to be a zero. No spring involved right here from event two to event three. That's going to a zero. Right here, speed equals to a zero at the event three. That is kinetic energy event three equals to a zero. There we go. From this zero level, it is height h3 away. That's where this guy becomes <clears throat> m times g times h3. No spring involving. Right here, you guys have one half m v2 squared equals m times g times h3. Couple of steps you have to do. Mass is going to cancel out. V2 already no number from the part B. H3, you can find that part. But how far along the ramp? The question, when you find H3 from this question right here, you have, question is asking for how much is this length? you have an angle 30 degrees and you already found H3. You can use the trig relationship to find how much is the L for this question. So again, everyone, please work through along this one. Come with questions, come with answers you found. We will check them inside the classroom tomorrow, Wednesday's class before you start the lab.